based on execution. Scores range from 1 to 10, with 10 representing perfection. The top five scores on each apparatus are totaled for each team. After compulsories, we're standing in second place. Being in that position, uh, going into optionals, you know, I think even sparked a little bit more of a fire underneath us. In the second round, known as the optionals, the same scoring format applies. Gymnasts have the option of performing more difficult maneuvers. JC was the leadoff on our team. That is a huge position, and she set us up to be on a roll. I was first up on bars, and I've never been so scared in my life. <laughs> Probably the best routine of my life. Good smile for JC. In some ways, that's like being a sacrificial lamb in gymnastics. You know, they put up the base performance to get a good base score, and then they lead to their superstar on each individual event. And the superstars did not disappoint. Miller was dominant on the beam. Dawes dazzled on the floor. Amy Chow was electric on the uneven bars the Americans would take the lead into their last event, the vault. Each athlete gets two attempts. The lowest score is thrown out. I went up and I hit my vault. And that's when my competition was over, so I kind of allowed myself to look at the scores. And I looked up at the scoreboard, I'm like, we have a gold medal. With the wonder girl, Mochianu, next, it seemed like a sure thing. Gymnastics, it's not over till it's over. Everybody was just waiting, you know, one after the next to hit and to win. And then all of a sudden, I made this mistake. I was just shocked myself. Like, what in the world just happened? It looked like somebody had greased the mat. I mean, she just slipped down and ended up on her rear end. I'm like, I did not just fall. I did this so many times. I mean, hundreds and maybe thousands of times I had done it before. I could do that fault night or day, midnight or whatever, three in the morning. I could always do that fault. On a Tuesday evening with millions of television viewers watching and the weight of Olympic gold on her back, 14-year-old phenom Dominique Mochianu could not do that vault, even on her second try. It was shocking to imagine all of a sudden that things were falling apart. And she is a great vaulter. This was a lock. And yet, you know, it was quickly crumbling in front of our eyes. Olympic gold would come down to the last competitor, Carrie Strug. Look at me one more time. You can do it. We've done so many times. I know you can do it. I remember the first time I saw Chuck. Lingo premiered on GSN. In the final event of the women's team gymnastics competition at the 1996 Olympic Games, America's most celebrated gymnast, Dominique Mochianu, fell twice attempting the vault. If you told me this was going to happen, I would have said, no way, it's not. Holding a razor thin lead over arch rival Russia, Team USA turned to its last hope an 18-year-old Karoli student who had never quite realized her potential. She was probably the most unlikely star of the Olympics. She wasn't the one that the world had picked. She wasn't the Dominique Dawes or the Shannon Miller or even the Dominique Mochanu. Standing at the end of the mat, Carrie Strug was destined for Olympic history as the little girl who won gold for America or the last one standing as it all slipped away. It seemed like I was a, a bad dream. And walking back, I knew something was wrong. And I think, Gary, what's wrong? What's wrong? My leg hurts. Shake it off. Shake it off. They had no way of knowing that she'd torn two ligaments in her left ankle. All they did know was that she had one last chance. You've got 32,000 people screaming. You've trained your whole life for this moment. I think it would have been horrible to just walk away and for the rest of my life wonder 
if I had done it, would I have made it? Would we have won the gold? Would we have not? I definitely knew it was a, a great fault. Gary Strong is hurt. She is hurt badly. I was just proud that I did what I knew I was capable of because for so long everybody said Kerry Strug, she has the talent, you know, she works so hard, but she always blows it when it counts. You know, I couldn't really deal with the pressure. So it's kind of ironic that in the end, my last competition at the Olympics when everything was on me, that I was finally able to pull it out and do well and do what I had done in the gym over and over and over and over again. I really was like, okay, breathe, you know? At least you still won the gold and you have something to bring home. I don't think you can describe it. It was hard to believe at the time that we had won. It was so amazing, but we didn't really understand that we had made history and that this was such a huge deal. It didn't hit me then, and to tell you the truth, it's probably still hitting me. I had the biggest smile on my face, and I, you know, watched our flag rise, and I was just like, I mean, it was just like 12 years of my life. The seven of us have something that no one else has at this point, as far as gymnastics goes. I think for the American public, the Magnificent Seven is one of those Olympic moments that will be etched in people's memories forever. You know, and many years later, people won't quite remember all the circumstances, but they'll say, yeah, I remember those girls. They were amazing. And that one girl, she landed and she stuck that vault and they won the gold medal. I mean, if that's the legacy that they have, that's good enough. <laughs>